Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology instructional videos and we're on to part 15 of the EPA swim series. We're now onto the culvert under roadway sample project, so let's open that one up. You can get our free hydrology terms guide in the description down below. It's a guide outlining all the basic hydrology terms that you need to know when working in the industry or preparing for exams, whatever you're doing. Uh, that's a great guide and you can get that 100% free in the description as well as view the previous 14 videos we've covered. Anyways, let's get into this one. So culvert under roadway. Here's what we got here. A culvert model. And this one's got quite a few instructions on this one. So here's our culvert. I'm going to make this smaller now. Here's our culvert model setup. We got an inlet roadway, culverts under the roadway an outlet channel, and then tail water. So for the culvert model, this example is taken from design guideline four that appears in the Federal Highway Administration's uh, Hydraulic Design of Highway Culverts, third edition. And it shows you where you can get that. It models a culvert, uh, culvert designed to convey a 25-year design flow without overtopping the road passing over it. There's significant storage in the channel upstream of the culvert whose effect in reducing peak flow is accounted for. The physical components of the model include a storage node named inlet that receives a design flow hydrograph as inflow and represents the upstream channel storage with an area versus depth curve, a two barrel culvert that connects the inlet node to an outlet node that runs underneath a road. Each barrel is a 36 inch circular corrugated metal pipe a roadway type weir that represents the road crossing and is offset from the inlet invert the height of the road's shoulder, a downstream natural channel that conveys flow from the culvert outlet to an outfall node named tailwater that is assigned a fixed stage. The data components consist of the inflow hydrograph time series, which has a three hour duration and peak flow of 220 CFS and a V-shaped storage curve that provides about three acres of surface area at a depth of eight feet. Some specific features to note about the model are the culvert pipe ha has its culvert code property set to four, which is the code for a circular corrugated metal pipe with head wall inlet. The roadway re weir has its road width property set to 40 feet and its road surface property set to gravel. The downstream channel is trapezoidal with a bottom width of 10 feet and side slopes of two to one. Dynamic wave flow routing is used. Culvert analysis requires that this option will be selected with the five second variable time step. Yeah, you're gonna to wanna to use dynamic wave flow because of potential backwater flow and other uh, facets of culvert design. Run the example and plot both the total inflow to the inlet node and the flow in the channel conduits on the same graph. Okay, let's run this example here. And plot both the total inflow to the inlet node and the flow in the channel conduit on the same graph. We go to report. Uh, we want to do it, maybe not well, time series. Let's see. Yeah, I think we want to do time series. So we're going to add inflow to the inlet node. Total inflow, okay. Flow in the channel conduit. Okay. And let's plot that. Okay, so we can see both those there. Note how the peak flow has been reduced from 220 CFS to 150 CFS. Okay, we can see that all right there. If you compare this curve with the curve shown in the Federal Highway HDS5, you will see that there that the two are virtually identical. Also note that there is no overtopping of the roadway since there's no flow through the roadway weir. Then try, re, try rerunning the example with the inlet storage node converted to a junction node. Okay, inlet storage. Make this a junction now. Junction. This removes the effect of upstream storage. If you plot the culvert and roadway weir flow on the same graph, you'll see that the roadway gets flooded when the peak flow occurs. Okay, so let's run it again. Report. You plot the culvert and roadway weir flow. OK, 
Okay, plot it. And we do see that, yeah, that we get some uh, roadway gets flooded when the peak flow occurs uh, up at the top here. So that is this culvert model here. If you have any questions, leave that in the, in the comments down below. Pretty interesting project. You can view that highway manual there. Check out the other videos in the series in the description, and we'll see you guys next time.